The National CNA Association announces its first ever CNA summit to address the workforce crisis, and the nation's first COVID-19 criminal charges against nursing home leaders have been filed in Massachusetts. This and more, next. You're watching LTC News with Dane Henning. Welcome to CNA TV Long-Term Care News. I am Dane Henning. Today is Wednesday, September 30th, 2020. To stay in the Long-Term Care News, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. The National Association of Healthcare Assistants, or NACA, and CNAs for Quality Care have announced their first ever CNA staffing summit to be held on October 20th. The announcement comes on the heels of the release of the Coronavirus Commission for Safety and Quality in Nursing Homes report, which contains a number of recommendations that affect direct care staff. In an effort to address what's contained in the report as well as other issues, the CNA Staffing Summit will convene nursing home operators, administrators, nursing staff, directors of nursing, HR professionals, recruiters, and more so that everyone can learn from CNAs with the objective of creating a more unified workforce. A panel of nine career CNAs from nursing homes around the country will be moderated by NACA CEO Lori Porter and Skill Nursing News Editor Alex Spanko. Harvard professor David Grabowski, Ph.D., will examine the state of the research on COVID-19 and direct care staff. Medical epidemiologist for long-term care at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Namali Stone, MD, has also been invited to speak. In addition to education, CNAs and others will address what matters most to direct care staff engagement, recognition, and recruitment. Quote, the purpose of this is to not only bring together the entire nursing home workforce ecosystem, but also dig into the unfettered truth about what CNAs, their team members, need to be more effective, more engagement, and frankly, more appreciated, says Porter. Three CEUs are currently pending from the National Association of Boards of Long-Term Care Administrator Board, the NAB. For more information and to register, go to NACA's website at nacacna.org. Two leaders of a veteran's home where 76 patients died due to the coronavirus were criminally charged Friday morning, according to Massachusetts Attorney General Mara Healy. Healy said that they are believed to be the first criminal charges in the country filed against nursing home officials in connection with the pandemic. A grand jury indicted former Holyoke Soldiers Home Superintendent Bennett Walsh, 50, and former medical director Dr. David Clinton, 71, based on their decision to merge two dementia care units, combining COVID-19 positive residents with others who were asymptomatic. Healy said short staffing factored into some of their decision-making process. The accused are charged with causing or permitting serious bodily injury or neglect of an elder and could face prison time if convicted. An independent government report released three months ago claimed that Walsh was not qualified to operate a long-term care facility and alleged that, quote, substantial errors and failures led to the deaths. Common practice has been to isolate residents who have tested or displayed signs of the coronavirus. The consolidation of the two dementia units pushed more than 40 veterans into a space designed for only 25 under normal circumstances, the report authors noted. More than 160 residents and staff members were found to be coronavirus positive after the original outbreak, officials said. March 17th was the first date a patient tested positive. He was not isolated until test results came back. However, despite showing symptoms of the virus for weeks, he was allowed to mix with three roommates and others in common areas, according to the report, which was written based on an investigation led by a former federal prosecutor hired by Republican Governor Charles Baker. The Massachusetts case has been closely watched by long-term care and legal stakeholders around the country. Experts have predicted that nursing home operators could be in store for a wide onslaught of legal claims. Operators of the Holyoke Soldiers Home were hit with a proposed class action lawsuit in mid-July seeking more than $175 million in damages. It is based largely on findings of the state's investigation and subsequent report, which called some of the manage management's decisions baffling. This has been your long-term care news update. Everyone have a wonderful week, and I'll see you on Wednesday.